Welcome back. Last time we discussed how to set up your first simulation for finding the DC operating point and performing DC sweeps. This time we're going to look closer at two additional analysis types, transient and AC simulations. Let's start with the transient simulation. This kind of analysis allows us to find out how a circuit behaves over time. It's also very simple to set up. Just open the choose analysis window and then go to TRAN for transients. Then we can choose at what time the simulation should end. Now we're running a signal at the input of 100 kilohertz, so let's set this to 100 microseconds. That's equivalent to 10 periods at the input signal. Make sure that the enabled flag here is checked and then click on OK. Before we run the transient simulation, let's disable RTC simulation from before. And because the input signal now depends on time as well as the output signal, we should plot both of them. Click on the green button and that will run the simulation. And indeed, we get a plot window with two different signals. The input signal, which is this one, and the output signal, this one. Because Cadence assigns similar colors to both signals, it's a bit hard to distinguish between the two. So let's assign one a different color. Double click on the red box next to out and then choose a different color over here. Let's go for green. Now we can clearly see that when the input signal goes into the positive domain, the output signal goes to ground. And when the signal at the input goes to zero, the output signal will go to the supply voltage. So indeed, the inverter is operating correctly. In an AC simulation, the frequency of a small signal in the circuit is swept across some range of values. And then we measure what comes out of the circuit. It is very important though to note that an AC simulation makes a crucial assumption. It assumes this small input signal. What that means in practice is that nonlinear components like transistors and diodes are all linearized in their DC bias points. And then after the linearization, we apply a small input signal to that linear system. In other words, we can take the DC transfer function of the transistor, which could look something like this, for example, for a MOSFET in saturation, and then make the assumption that the input signal will be close to this red dot, which we'll say is the DC bias point of this transistor. Then to simplify our model, we will replace this white nonlinear curve by this red linear curve, which is tangent to the nonlinear curve. Now it's clear to see that if the input signal on the x-axis is very close to this red dot, we won't have that much of a problem. But the further we move away from that red dot, the larger the error is going to be between the nonlinear transfer and the linear transfer. So that means that AC simulations are limited by the assumption that we made before. The approximation is good enough for input signals that have a small amplitude, but the larger our input signal becomes, the poorer the approximation will be. So if we want to get a good impression of a circuit's behavior at a high frequency and for a reasonable amplitude, it is very wise to not only run an AC simulation, but always run a transient simulation as well. Does that make an AC simulation useless? Absolutely not. It can, for example, be incredibly useful in spotting whether your circuit satisfies oscillation conditions at a certain frequency, finding out the approximate bandwidth of a circuit, or figuring out how much and where we need to add some compensation capacitance to a circuit. Naturally, these aren't the only examples of how you could use an AC simulation. There are many others, but these are just three examples. With all of that out of the way, let's actually start setting up an AC simulation. First, we should select the input voltage source, go to properties, and then make sure that the AC magnitude is set to some value. Let's go with all one volt. When Cadence runs this AC simulation, this DC voltage at the input will determine the bias points of the internal transistors. And thus, these transistors are linearized around this voltage. Then, after the inverter has been linearized, an AC signal, so a sine wave, with an amplitude of one volt will run through the inverter. Choosing a value of one volt is just a convenient value for us. Let's say that the output voltage is five volts when we apply an input signal with a magnitude of one volt. Then we can compute the gain by dividing the output amplitude of five by the input amplitude of one. 
but because dividing by 1 has no impact, we can say that the output voltage then is equivalent to the gain. In other words, choosing a magnitude of 1 volt just makes it easy for us to calculate the gain. Technically speaking, we can assign any value to this, but if we then want to calculate the gain from input to output, we will have to divide the amplitude at the output by the amplitude at the input. Because we changed the property of the input voltage source, we have to update the netlist by running check and save. Now ADEL is aware of the changes that have been made to this source. With that introduction out of the way, let's start setting up our own AC simulation. Now in ADEL, we can add the AC simulation by going to the analysis window, going to AC, sweeping the frequency, and we're going to sweep it from 100 Hz to 10 GHz. Let's sweep on a logarithmic frequency axis for 1001 points and click on OK to confirm. Next, make sure that the transient and DC simulations are disabled and we don't really need to plot the input signal anymore because now it has been defined by the AC simulation. We can now run the simulation, after which we get a plot that looks like this. Now it might look a little bit strange, but that is mainly caused by the fact that the horizontal axis now is logarithmic, whereas the vertical axis isn't. In video 8, I will show you how you can convert these obtained voltages to decibel values, but for now we can at least get a logarithmic vertical axis by right-clicking on this axis and choosing log scale. We can now see that after having an approximately constant gain at low frequencies of around 2, at high frequencies a single pole roll-off behavior will become dominant, which decreases the gain significantly. And that already wraps up a crash course on how to use the transient and AC simulations in Cadence. And naturally, there are many more simulation types, as you might have already spotted in the analysis window. For example, there are simulations that allow you to find the scattering parameters of a circuit, or that allow you to perform periodic steady state analysis, or even simulations that allow you to assess a circuit's harmonic behavior. For our use cases, however, in advanced CMOS design, we can stick to the transient DC and AC analysis for 99% of the cases. Next time, we're going to continue working on our simulation by using the power of variables in cadence.